Their kids not good at music. They're not good at music. Yeah, but what if they're passionate about music, but they suck at it, and then we have to suffer? Being creative around you, which is like just playing guitar, trying to write songs and stuff. It felt a little bit like getting naked in front of you. I was a little intimidated to like show you my stuff because I knew you were like excellent and I had like nothing. You won't rise to the level of your goals. You'll fall to the level of your system. To the strength of your system. I think I like, it was the level of your system. I like but the way you I said it. it. Like <laughs> Sherelle, my name is Megan. And I'm Sherelle. Baby, you're supposed to say welcome back. Welcome back. There you go. Assuming you've been here before. Make you yourself have. at home. You know you have. <laughs> if you're new, welcome. Uh, if you don't know us, me and Sherelle are married. And We're married. <laughs> Why'd you say it like that? It's just cute. Aw, I think we're cute too. <laughs> We're married, and we have a little life together with two dogs, and we play music together. That's Mm -hmm. basically it. Well, how are you guys doing now that it's 2024? It's been one week of the new year. Um, Do you have any, like, highlights from the first, your first week of the new year? I don't know. I just wanted to know, like, everybody, how they've been doing. I think highlights for me are, like... I don't know. We just got back from your parents' house, so highlight for me is being back home. <laughs> That's yeah. That's unnecessary. It wasn't <laughs> meant to be salty. It's just I like our home. I like being no, home. No, that's a, that's definitely a highlight for me. We went to my parents' house in San Jose for the holidays. Holidays. It's the first time we've been back this whole year. Yeah, yeah. In we- our own home. <gasps> oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Our first time in the new year. I love our little home. I love everything we set up about it. All our little things, all our clean spaces, and just like everything's just our space and how we like it. So I, it is nice to be back. Um, yeah. Family's I, fun uh, and lively, and you're always with people. Yes. I did enjoy, you know, like we're, we were around your family for almost like two weeks, pretty much. So I enjoyed the little times where I, we got to go do stuff just us. So we went to Sacramento. That was fun. Oh, yeah. It took Sacramento a Sacramento day trip. A somewhat spontaneous. I feel like it could still be spontaneous if you planned to do it a couple of days before. That's spontaneous for us, at least. <laughs> yeah. So we planned a couple of days before to go to Sacramento which was a few hour drive to see our friends. That was nice. Yeah, my maid of honor and her husband were in town, so we went and hung out with them in Sacramento. It was a long drive in the rain. But oh, that's true. The way back was like was insane. I was like gripping the steering wheel, like I was like praying in my head, like please don't veer off. I was like, we we're for sure gonna crash because I do remember one okay. time. <laughs> I like literally grabbed the steering wheel and pulled you back into the lane because you were going. Wait, no, you yeah. didn't do that. Yes, I did. Because you were like, this will be forever ingrained in my memory. I don't remember. Because you couldn't see anything. And there's, you know, where like oh. the lane splits off to the exit. Yeah. So our lane was curving left. And then the exit was curving right, and you were going straight down the middle. So I, gra- I said, "Babe," and I grabbed the wheel and I went. Shh. He jerked a little bit. I think I think I was slightly over the line because it was really hard to see with all the rain and stuff. But I was, it was not slightly I was over. doing good. What you were doing great, but it wasn't slightly was over the great. line. I had a lot going against me, but I was a good driver. <laughs> <laughs> I think you might have a little PTSD from driving in in the dark. No, no. It's just, I don't know if you guys, like some of you will know, like when you're driving at night and the lights just kind of glare a little bit extra. We got to see the optometrist because she can give you these special glasses that can remove the glare. I think I'm okay. (laughs) I think I I did a good job. Uh, Yeah, fine job. I will say my anxiety kicked in after that and was like, She would have crashed if I didn't do that. No, no. That's the thing is like, 
most of the time you drive us and so you since you sprained your ankle and it's like I should just drive right so since I have all the control when I'm the driver you get nervous yeah especially when you're going in the wrong direction in a rainstorm I was not going the wrong direction <laughs> I was not going you were like aiming straight towards okay. the I was partitioner <laughs> I was like oh my god no I wasn't <laughs> We'll just remember this two separate ways, but I appreciate you yeah, driving. Sometimes, thanks. I think I did okay. Um, sometimes oh, you made it out alive in our car undamaged for the most part, so. Here's a hot tip for anyone in a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes you don't remember things the same exact way, and at some point you just. Yeah, there's two ways. The right way and then your way. Yeah, right. You've so. said that. Uh, uh, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> You're so funny. Uh, but wow, no. the sass level. <laughs> the sarcasm that is dripping from your lips in the new year. No less. No less. <laughs> <laughs> can, you assign, can you assign New Year's resolutions to your spouse? No. I'm going to assign a new year's resolution to Okay, you. okay, okay. Stop this being is... so sarcastic. <laughs> what? I'm assigning a new year's resolution for you. This is going off It's track. like on gifts or how you can recommend gifts for people. I'm recommending a new year's resolution. Okay, okay. What's one for me? <laughs> I feel put on the spot. That's because I'm perfect. <laughs> Okay, New Year's resolution for my wife. Don't be so arrogant. <laughs> That's can't Don't happen. be so salty at other people. <laughs> That's a part of who I am. Mm, you can change characteristics of who you are. Yeah, you know. I can drastically try to be somebody else. Something <laughs> else. What? <laughs> what? Oh my gosh. Shout out to all the DC comic fans out I'm, there. You know what I'm talking about. I know. I'm like, you've read too many books and stuff. <laughs> the way you it's talk like the sometimes. intro to Arrow. Like oh. the Green Arrow show. I could be something else. No, it's like I had to become someone else. Something else. Oh my gosh. Okay. I feel like you had actually stuff to talk about on this podcast. I'm and sure we're just I did. like, I was enjoying blah, resting blah, blah, in the new year. We're just like, hey. Uh, hey. What is it called? shooting the i'm not gonna say it shit <laughs> <laughs> i am gonna warn my parents i have sworn before but i feel she has a potty mouth larry and crystal just so you know i feel a little bit timid on the on podcast why this is, these are your people these are your <sighs> homies in your own house okay people that okay. no less <laughs> why do you keep saying no less <laughs> say no less less <laughs> Say, say less, less. more <laughs> <laughs> okay but uh if you don't know about me my name's megan hi um <laughs> uh i grew up with the deep beliefs that you're not supposed to swear she is a christian yeah i i still am a christian more or less and i feel like i really grew up with the idea of like if you have the holy spirit in you then you don't have a potty mouth, basically. If you have the Holy Spirit in you, then you don't have a shitty mouth in you. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I have a pretty good mouth. I've been cleaning my teeth. That's good. I've been seeing you doing that double brushing in the evening with flossing. flossing. Okay, wait. What was I talking about? I don't know. You were talking about how you don't swear and you're scared of your parents hearing your oh. podcast because you think that they'll ground you even yeah, though basically. you live here. I'm trying to roll out my most authentic way of being slowly. <laughs> So that i'm not afraid that's a good new year's resolution for you sure. i'm gonna assign that one for you too you can't just write a list of all the areas of growth that i have i'm agreeing with you on something you decided for yourself okay <laughs> what was it you wanted to talk about today well i wanted to ask them how their week into new year's was because you know like i always this is my favorite week of the new year where it's just like everybody just stops caring about their new year's resolutions they like have worked out up until this point yeah, yeah it's like yeah. okay i worked out a whole week now i'm tired or i journaled every day and now i'm done i didn't have any resolutions so i've been good <laughs> 
You can't fail if you don't try. I try. I feel like last year we tried to instill positive mentalities and habits and lifestyles. And so coming into the new year is just a continuation of that. Yeah. And honestly, like if that's you guys, go for it. And I stopped making resolutions for stupid stuff. Like, <laughs> I'm not going to eat any more sugar. Because last time I did that, and I kept eating bad. sugar. You did that like last year. I did I did that probably like four or five years ago. I learned something today. Like, you have to have a system and not just a goal, which is basically what a New Year's resolution is. It's a big goal. Mm. But you need a, a system so that you oh, what can... What was the, the quote? I don't know off the top of my you head. You won't you won't rise to the level of your goals you'll fall to the level of your system the strength of your systems i think it was the level of your system i like the way i said it it. like (laughs) it's not really a quote if you just (laughs) add your own own (laughs) flair but yeah Yeah, so quote megan now because i changed one word (laughs) but it's true it's like if your goal is to be healthy but you don't put a system in place to do it, then like you could say, okay, well, I achieved doing Insanity Max 30 program. And now I'm that that's done. I'm done. Or I trained for a marathon. I ran the marathon. Marathon's over. Now I'm done. Like Can you didn't just say, put a system in place to stay healthy every day. You look really good today. Oh, thank you. You look really healthy and you're glowing. Well... You know, it's the and good your earrings? cameras. Did you put in earrings and you normally don't? I do yeah, usually I wear extra. earrings, but thank you for noticing. Look very sparkly. Thanks. Um, yes, I agree. <laughs> I agree. I think that we've come up with pretty good systems. My system now is like if I feel like I need to get exercise, I feel stressed in my body. I try to do one exercise a day and that's like the lifestyle I've been mm. creating and I don't feel bad if I have chocolate, too. I like it. That's what I noticed at your parents' house. There's a lot more snacks and oh my gosh. yummy things laying around their house. I just accepted it. I'd have, like, a <laughs> giant bowl of lace chips I feel like I day. didn't work out in two weeks. Like, I maybe did, like, once or twice. Granted, I have a giant boot on my ankle, which limits my walking around. Of course it does. But yeah. So, but how are you, how are you doing the new year? I'm doing good. Uh, Mentally, I feel like it's good for me to be home. Like, it was nice being in in Sacramento. It was nice being in San Jose, uh, especially because my parents came out. Yeah. That was fun. Interesting. Yes. Sherelle's parents, our nephew, came out to my parents, and we all had a little get-together. My nephew did not come out to your parents. Oh. No, they traveled to be there. yes <laughs> there as be no far as i'm aware my nephew is straight but hey to all our nephews and nieces you're we're ready for you we're we're accepting of all straight and queer people yes and we love all of you um we just prefer the queers no no i think i don't think that's healthy to be honest i know because then straight people feel bad or they feel like they're not really we sure. love everybody I just personally like a level of oppression in a person so that I feel like I can relate to them. If so, Yeah, if somebody has an ex- like has had a hard life experience, it's easier to relate to them because they're more down to earth and they're less like judgmental, I think. Yes. Yep. Wow. But if that if you're you and you have never had anything bad ever happen to you and you are a person <laughs> of privilege and you just fit into everywhere that you're at yay for you and you should be an ally (laughs) yes that's what thank you yeah i've been learning that but yeah (laughs) i'm to answer your question you have asked me twice i'm doing great in this new year i'm glad to be home i feel like being home like my mentality shifts like Mm -hmm. i wasn't really able to be that creative when we were on vacation because I was in vacation mode. We yeah, and we take up a lot of space. Like you and oh, I like to rude. be No, like we like to be creative in our own space with like no distractions, I feel like. Yeah, that's why it's nice to live here in our own home cuz it's like we could just spread out and create nonstop. 
into the night. <laughs> Unfortunately, <yes. laughs> we're too driven, too driven, <laughs> too inspired. <laughs> no, but it's fun. I just I feel like the energy is different when we're home. I don't know if, if you feel that way, mm-hmm. but like when I come home, I immediately think of guitar riffs that I want to play on my new guitar. Um, chapters that i want to write in the book like i just it's like this thing happens in my brain where my brain just unlocks and i see all of the things i can do to be creative you just casually mentioned writing in the book did you tell them that you're writing a book i did not are you telling them now i'm writing a book yay i'm so glad you guys know that now because i'm excited (laughs) but no pressure no timeline nothing at all well it will be finished this year all you need to know all you need to know is sherelle is like the most excellent writer and you're (laughs) ah that's so nice (laughs) i know (laughs) phenomenal writers and you think i'm good that's really nice you are you tell the most amazing stories every time we're watching tv you're like oh the writers did this and the writers should do this and oh like you're just your that's brain that's gotta be so annoying for you it's kind of <laughs> funny it's like you always know what's gonna happen next which is like ugh. <laughs> but um you yeah. just your brain works that way you're obsessed with books and i'm excited for your book well thank you baby i'm not gonna let you read it so yeah, she's not letting me even look at it until I didn't even tell her the plot. Like she has no idea what the book's about. No, nope, no idea. I do know it's a nonfiction. Can I say that? It is a or fiction. Or wait, sorry. It's a fiction. She doesn't even know that. <laughs> no. I you know nothing. The, I forgot the difference between You know nothing, Jon Snow. What? Oh, you've never seen Game of Thrones. Sorry. <sighs> That's bad. okay. There's lots of people out there who know that reference. You're just not cool. one of them. Aw. <laughs> How are you doing in the new year? Mm, good. I think I, I think I, I think I summed up how I was doing. I think I'm good. Oh, okay. <laughs> yep. All tied up with a bow. I feel good. I feel oh, good about my health and my mentality. I've been taking time to unwind. I suppose I was a little bit stressed out at work yesterday. You seemed like. I just kept hearing from various rooms in the house. I kept hearing you at your desk shouting, ah, it's too much, it's too much. I'm overwhelmed, I'm overwhelmed. Yeah, (laughs) I forgot about that. Once I'm in like weekend mode, I completely just forget about what's (laughs) happening at at work. But yesterday I had like a come to Jesus moment. Um, It was just, I had just too much to do on my work task list and i was like i'm the only one that knows i'm doing all these things and it's Mm. just so many things and i'm not going to be able to finish it all on time so then when i see that i won't be able to finish everything on time i just go on tiktok for like hours (laughs) like i don't know not hours but i just i just try to escape because i have a hard time getting motivated to start everything and to just i don't know so i got overwhelmed and then what can i say i feel like not to interrupt you, but just to insert here. I do You're welcome to interrupt me. I feel like a lot of people feel what you felt because a lot of people are coming off of the holiday season, which pretty much is from October to January second. Yeah. You know, like everybody's coming off of the holidays and having to jump back into work and it's hard to be motivated again. Like it's hard oh, yeah. to get organized, first of all. Especially if like your workload is at the same pace that it like you just have to pick it right back up. Yeah. And especially for me, like the past few months, we've been a I've been a little bit overbooked and it's just constantly reprioritizing and moving things around. Like we kinda need like a little bit more of people on my team to help with things. So I just So what did you do though? Like did you just end the work day straight <laughs> out or I, did you do something about it? I love She quit no. the job. <laughs> No, I like my job. I do graphic. This is her two-week notice right here. Hopefully your no, boss is listening. No, no, please don't. <laughs> please don't. I really like my job. I do graphic design. I'm excellent at it. That's part of why I like it is because I feel like I'm good at it and people need me and it's like fulfilling in that way. Um, but I had a Zoom with my boss to like talk about some project and then I was like, by the way, can you help me prioritize for just like what I need to finish today? Nice. I was, th- thank you. 
it's very businessy words, I guess. But I was like, what do I need to finish today? Because look at all this stuff I have. <laughs> you, did you have a single tear rolling down your cheek? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, and then she was like, OK, um, you can finish this and this. Everything else can be next week. And I was like, OK. So then I finished what I did. Maybe that's awesome. Them. I know. I was like, uh, right on. high five. Thank you. Good job. I was so proud of myself. So that's just like, if you guys feel similarly, hopefully, some bosses I feel like are like, okay, well, you're not getting your stuff done on time. Like, my boss is very puts us first and tries to be kind and like, you know what I mean? I have a really good situation, but you have a really good team too. Yes, yes, I do. So hopefully if you're feeling that way, you can go to your your boss or whoever and just like, you know, I just I never want to get to the point of like having a panic attack or something because sometimes it can just get so bad if you don't have people to support you and help you and people mm -hmm. you can turn to and be like, I have so much. Um, I don't know what to do. So I love that. My yeah. therapist said that because I have a personality, which I think you do too. I have a personality where I don't really like to lean on people. And I don't really like to let people see my weakness. Mm. <laughs> Especially if I'm in the middle of a struggle. It's very easy for me to like talk about something I struggled with that I already mm -hmm. figured out. But it's hard for me to, in the moment, be like, this is what's hard for me right here, right now. So my therapist said, well, Shrell, you can keep living like that. Or you can recognize that you are your best self when you have the best team around mm. you. Yep. Yeah, sometimes I get I get lost in like, I don't know, trying to figure out when it's too much. Like, oh, it's just a little bit of stress and I just need to push things to tomorrow. I just need to do this. But sometimes it's like you hit a wall and that's when I hit a wall and I started getting distracted and procrastinating and just feeling like overwhelmed so i think i like put my head on my desk and i was just like i was and you were like you. are you okay you look stressed <laughs> and i never really know like should i approach her because it's mm. a different you when you're working Aww. like i respect the hell out of you in mm. all scenarios but particularly when you're working and you're working from home i'm like i could very easily like be in your space but you seemed like you could use a hug so, okay, but <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Um, Wait, I did give you a French toast though, so hopefully that helped. I that did help. <laughs> oh, it did was, you like? Did you like the little? Pow I tried to make it fancy. You made the fancy. Okay, <laughs> so like, <laughs> I was treated all day yesterday to Cheryl making me food. <laughs> it was so sweet. I was like working at my desk, and she was like, "I'm gonna make you breakfast." I was like, "Sweet." She made French toast with, we use uh, honey instead of like syrup. So she put a bunch of honey and like butter. And then she put some like powdered sugar on the I top. Sprinkled it. Sprinkled it. Frosted it. Sugar. Yeah. And then like some potatoes. Yes. Like little roasted potatoes. So good. Now I'm hungry. Well, breakfast for dinner. Actually, yeah, I could eat breakfast all day. Well, I'm saying, do you want to have a breakfast for dinner? I want breakfast me? for, is it dinner time or lunch? I want breakfast next again. <laughs> and every time want, after. When we're done with this, I'm going to make French toast. Oh my gosh. As long as you make me some, because I want some. Ooh. Just saying. <laughs> of course Sometimes I'm you some. make some just for you. Of and then I'm, I'm like, <laughs> please, sir, can I have some more? <laughs> can I have any at all? Is there any more? <laughs> is there any for me at all? Oh, but that's that's how I'm doing it. So then I was like, okay, I felt better. We had a glass of wine. We took some fun videos and we're just playing around with some cameras and stuff last night. And I, I don't know. I just watched my yeah. TV show and had a nice slow morning this morning. Yeah. So I've been enjoying being home after the holidays. I think I can't tell if the dogs are enjoying being home because when we're at your parents' house and my parents' house, they get. They get everything. They get <laughs> treats. They get pets. They get to all run the around, love. run around, and be hooligans. And yeah, they everybody that's around them allows it. And then when they're home, it's like, although like now that we're home, so we have two Australian shepherds. One of them is like two and a half years old, and he's a little bit wacky. The other one's <laughs> like eight, nine years old. We don't know. And um, 
<laughs> I walked one of them today, but the other one I didn't walk, the younger one, because he was a little turd. And he ate like part of the wooden thing on the side of our porch. Oh. But like oh, what I was saying was I think he acts like he's the king of the house when he we're home. He does. He acts like a little brat guy. Yeah. So now it's like we got back and he's just like, oh, back to my little kingdom. So. The sad thing is you were about to walk him today because Megan's been pulling mm. double duty walking the dogs because I can't walk around with this giant boot on my foot like I've complained about 10 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> if you forgot <laughs> if you forgot shrell is struggling with not being able to walk around or go hike or do anything um but i did like a little workout in there so at oh, least there's so that cool. but it was kind of sad because he had a consequence for his behavior today and he oh. i don't even know if he got it but i think he i mean i think maybe because like i had his harness in my hand and i opened the door and like he knows what his harness looks like and then I saw all the destroyed wood <laughs> and I was like, no. And then I put the harness back and I grabbed Caius's harness, the other one. So I, and I like said no Baby, to the wood. He was so heartbroken. He howled. Don't make me sad. He howled the entire time you were he gone. Always does I that. took a little video cause it's kind of funny, but he just sat with his little oh. rump on the step and just howled and howled and howled. I felt bad. Didn't you it, tell him, like, shut up? No, I did not tell him to shut up. I just thought, okay, maybe uh-huh. he, like, I thought maybe he'll just learn to, like, self-soothe and comfort himself. Maybe that is him. Like, he's just howling till we come back. I was gone for 45 minutes, Cheryl. Did he howl the whole time? He howled for, like, at least 25 of those 45 minutes. <laughs> Our poor neighbors. Yeah, well, then their baby started screeching, so then it was just noise. <laughs> So I'm out having a happy little nice jog <laughs> in the neighborhood and back and home. I'm sitting in chaos. <laughs> There's our neighbor's baby screeching and our dog howling. Baby, sometimes I <laughs> want to have a baby with you. Like mm, sometimes I, I imagine having a new, like, no. Sometimes I imagine having a baby, you know. Not okay, just, like in like, the moment. Not having a kid, but like having a baby. Right. Like birthing a child. Yes, I know. And then I think about their kid oh and then i think about how loud she is yeah and they've had a baby for a while their baby's like a year and a half yeah i don't know anyway she's super cute so freaking cute but she's got some pipes so it makes me think she's gonna gonna be be a singer i was just gonna (laughs) say She's going to be like Alicia Keys or something. Honestly, yeah, because you were a screecher. That's what your mom said. She said you screeched. No, she didn't say you sang. She said you screeched for like the first two months nonstop of your life. She said she had to ask her mother-in-law to come out to to watch you so she could get rest. I'm saying the screeching correlates with amazing singer. Yes. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you didn't sound like that as an infant. Anyway, so speaking of babies and having them i had this dream when we were in san jose which turns out like everybody in the house was having weird dreams for like a week wait i i'm trying to remember the dream i had that same night and it was weird but i can't remember okay keep going so i had this dream where have you ever had like a dream where you can't move in it oh that's the worst but they've always been like nightmare dreams to me oh this one wasn't a nightmare where it's like in the middle of the night and there's like a skeleton in the basement Ew, and i like what can't <laughs> what and i like am in bed but i can't move have you really had that dream yes that's weird like a standing up skeleton or like a yeah i like was standing in the corner decomposed dead that's quite weird but you don't even have a basement i know <laughs> well dreams are like you've never had a basement dreams be dreams you know and I, I think I was in a bunk bed, which I used to have one when I was a kid. I think I was a kid when I had this dream. I was in the bunk bed, and in my dream, I got up and went out the front door, and it was nighttime, and it was creepy. Ew. But So I was like, oh, man, I, I got to get out of this dream. So I, like, wanted to get out of bed, but the only thing I could do to get out of bed was, like, just in my dream. Like, I couldn't wake up. I do not like that. Sorry. That's scary and sad. I'm sorry. But yes, I know. Poor don't. little baby Megan. <laughs> what I was saying about babies was I had this dream when we were staying in San Jose 
where I was pregnant and I couldn't move over. Like I was sleeping on my stomach. Mm -hmm. I wasn't like extremely pregnant, but there was like a little baby bump. (laughs) And I was like, roll over. Roll over. I can't sleep on my stomach. I can't sleep on my stomach. Roll over. And I kept trying to yell at my body to move, but I was like passed out. It's when you're in the middle of like REM sleep or whatever, right? Like, yeah. Which your, I have your no body idea. is like just locked. Yeah. I have no idea if pregnant women can sleep on their stomach or not. I feel like it's very protected. Yeah. I feel like it's okay if you're like only a little bit pregnant. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I wasn't thinking logically, <laughs> but I thought that's so weird. Which also, you had a funny freaking dream. <laughs> I like woke oh up to God. Megan going. Mm. Oh. <laughs> I don't mm. know if I've ever made noises. <laughs> She's making mouse noises. I don't know if I've ever made noises before, like out loud in the you real have. world. Yes, you have. Okay, I don't remember. You have never made mouse noises before. Okay, I was like, <laughs> and so in my dream, <laughs> and this was like in the morning, so I fell back asleep and I had this dream, and then I was making noises. So I had a dream. Okay. I used to be on the Cal Poly marching band. Woohoo. And I played the cymbals in the drum line and we would play at pep games and stuff like that. And they would always like need at least one cymbal player for each pep game. So I had a dream that I was still in the marching band and I was walking around campus just trying to like, I was about to go hang out with you, I think. Mm-hmm. And then a um, like little pep marching band walked past me and they didn't have any cymbals players and they were like it'd be nice if we had a cymbals player for salt. the game tonight salt for no reason at all <laughs> i know and i felt so sad because i knew that it like i would be the easiest option to like go and play cymbals and i it would take a lot more time to go and reach out and see if anybody was free and i felt so sad because like like I should just do it because like <laughs> why why would I make somebody else do it if I'm there like I should just do it so I felt so sad because I really didn't want to do it I don't want to play the pep game I don't know I'm one of those people that was mainly in band for like friends and I love them anyway so once once they were like oh we need a symbols player I was like so sad because I didn't want to do it and in my dream I was like <laughs> you were making so many you were like pouting. Was, you were I, pouting, crying. I was holding back tears because I was like, oh, "What a well." Do you it. were making that face in your sleep, and you were just kind of squeaking. <laughs> and then Sherelle like was like, "I shook her. You, I abruptly you, shook her awake." Are you okay? And I was like, "Oh." <laughs> I said, "Baby, are you okay?" Because you're making some funny noises. In I your was sleep. just like almost crying in my dream. <laughs> And then you just, you like looked so upset and so <laughs> cute when I woke you up until you realized it was a dream. And then you cracked a smile and started laughing to yourself. And then you went back to sleep. You uh, were no, so I think cute. I woke up. You were I so up. cute, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Poor me. <laughs> oh, man. Whew. That's funny. I don't think I'm going to allow our future kid to do marching band, just FYI. Why? Because every time you talk about it, you talk about how much work it is. But it's the And I'm like, I'm thing. not here to sit through all that. I have some of my closest friends from band. They can so. do it in college, but they can first try it out in college. What? Yeah. What? Can't you just get in the marching band in college? You have to practice. You have to be good at an instrument. Well, they'll have an instrument. They they can practice. Like they can take lessons. I don't look. This is too far in the future. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just putting my foot down. It's like swim meets. Putting your foot down. I don't think you could. I think you're gonna forget that you even put your foot. There's down. There's lots of things that I'm gonna forget that I put my foot down on. <laughs> and also, putting my foot down has like zero weight in this relationship. <laughs> so. No, I feel like sometimes you really do put your foot down. Like. If you, when it has to do with me doing something, yeah. Yes, yes. I can be like, I, I absolutely will not do that. No matter what you say, I'm not doing it. <laughs> but it's like, it's like, okay, when I was on the swim team, when I was a kid, like that's just okay. what I'm comparing it to. When I was on the swim team, I was on it from like eight years old to high school. Mm-hmm. And it was like a whole commitment. Like you're in practice 
That's every it. single day. Then you have competitions. You have like swim meets on the weekends, and then in the summer you're doing two a day practices. That's how my. That's a little bit more intense, but that's kind of how my percussion ensemble and stuff was in middle school and high school. There's all those competitions on the weekends, and I mean, as a parent, like my parents all the moms and stuff would be at the competitions making snacks and drive, so driving everybody around i'm like man that must have been so much work but, i don't want to but it just it filled a musical thing in my soul to do all that stuff yeah but so. you're good at music what if our kids not if our kids not good at music they're not good at music yeah, but what if they're passionate about music, but they suck at it, and then we have to f- suffer Why? while they're practicing in our house? Like my sister, when she was learning the violin, and she was terrible. <laughs> and it's like, Whoa. okay, first of all, stop. first of all, any kid learning the violin for the first time is going to be squeaky, I including was you. I was perfect. No, you, you weren't there. What do you know? <laughs> okay all right enough talk <laughs> enough talk that's it podcast <laughs> over <laughs> that's enough <laughs> no but really you wanted to talk about something substantial today and i feel like it's just been like no i didn't no wait i mean <laughs> <laughs> you you, your face twitched <laughs> <laughs> We're just yapping away, talking about nothing. I mean, the only thing I was planning on talking about was like how to foster creativity in your home. Because I feel Ooh, like that. How do we do that? Tell me. Because <sighs> I feel like that's something that I've been realizing um, is why I'm able to create when we get home from vacation. Because mm. we've made our home a place of creativity like we fostered it here yes i think it's like something i noticed is that growing up i would feel okay no offense to anybody Uh this is this is problematic no 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 no. uh whenever i would have the house to myself which i feel like every kid likes when they have the house to themselves i would go play the piano and sing and just be you know do whatever I wanted. Every kid likes to have their home to themselves. Cause what, There's I, no rules. Yeah, yeah. You could watch TV. You could do whatever you want. But like for me, I liked it because I could be creative and nobody else was listening. And even if nobody like judges you or cares, it's still like you just can play music and sing as loud as you want and figure out things without, you know being afraid of like cracking your voice or whatever you know what i mean like i know exactly what you mean i feel like even as an adult when you and i moved in together it took me a very long time to be able to do my thing and be creative around you it took me so long too because to record music and stuff i just go in my little room and i have my little microphone and my little computer and it's just my little cave yeah. But with you, we have so many common areas and we share this space and we're always around each other. We have like a little tiny house. Yeah. So it, it, it just took me a while. I don't know. It took me a while to be comfortable and vulnerable with you in all ways. And uh, yeah, especially when you know how good of a songwriter I am. So you probably were a little intimidated by me. Wow. Remember? <laughs> Remember my New Year's resolution I had for you in the beginning of the podcast? No, I forgot it because it was insignificant. To be less arrogant. (laughs) Less arrogant. Mm. I'm going to come up with another one for you. So now I get three and you get one. You need a lot of work because I'm older than you. So I've had like five more years of work Mm -hmm. on me. Mm -hmm. So Yet somehow... (laughs) I'm amazing. You are amazing. <laughs> and you're beautiful. And you're perfect. <laughs> <laughs> you're beautiful. Don't ever change. Don't ever. Shh. Don't ever change. <laughs> Get your finger out of my face. Oh. Uh, no, I took I agree. Like, it did take a long time for us to be creative around each other. And when we started to do it, that's kind of when... Like when I brought you into my writing world and you brought me into yours, that's when we realized, oh, wow. It was kind of like we can make a band and our band is awesome. That's true. It was definitely like compromising some things and just putting our creative stuff together, which I'm super excited about. 
I cannot hype enough about how excited I am for our songs that we're writing together. Oh, yeah. they're. It, I mean, they're ready to be recorded. They're written. I know. I know. The rest is just unwritten. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What was I going to say? Um, I don't know. Can't read your mind. Oh, uh, I was just going to say for me being creative around you which is like just playing guitar trying to write songs and stuff it felt a little bit like getting naked in front of you i feel like i prefer to get naked in front of you than right in front of you it took me a little bit of time to like be able to change in front of you like i would change with my back facing to you which was fine because then i saw your butt <laughs> oh my God. i was like no matter where you're facing i get to see something amazing so <laughs> i'm here for it no, I was very shy, um, and now I'm not. We I do remember, if your family stopped listening, I do remember one of the first times we had sex. <gasps> you, like, <laughs> you, like, <laughs> stripped, told me to close my eyes, <laughs> and then you, like, climbed into the bed and, like, hid under the covers. It was, like, yeah, like, the first time we tried anything. What do you mean, tried? It was awesome. I don't remember the rest. I just remember being nervous and then... It was awesome because it was so vulnerable. It was so vulnerable and so, like, I don't know, new. Yeah, I've never, like, seen anybody else naked, I don't think. I don't know what to say to that. (laughs) No, it it was just, like, weird, like... I don't know. It was like, like a ne- the next you, level. You were for so, us. you were so like, you were so chaste. Ch- chaste. chaste. Like you were just very chaste <laughs> and holy. Inexperienced. In- inexperienced. inexperienced. I keep saying the wrong word. <laughs> Unexperienced. Chaste. <laughs> Get a dictionary. Our niche. <laughs> I feel like it's niche. No, you were you were awesome, yeah. and I cherish those early memories <laughs> but yes you were oh. shy how do we get on your naked butt I, I, <laughs> only you can do that no. <laughs> <Get off. laughs> um we were talking about being vulnerable in creative space so like for you oh we we're talking about how it's easier to be naked than it is to write in front of each other naked that's a great song naked. so here's the thing about my wife she is known around here for her music abilities. She's won awards for multiple different things. So have you. She, Me too, but she's like amazing and everybody knows it. And when I started dating her, everybody was like, oh my gosh, you're dating Megan? Oh my God, really? Megan? Oh my gosh, yeah, her music Megan, amazing. That's straight girl. That's what they you said. Weren't, nobody said that because you didn't come across it that straight. And now we know why. <laughs> I guess so. Except for to the straight boys who thought you were into them. Anyway, <laughs> so when we were like dating, I think I just became like private about my music. Like I'm proud of my music. I've always been kind of a show off when it comes to like performing and I know I'm awesome. Um, she is awesome. But like when we moved in together and you could see my systems that were lack thereof in mm-hmm. my process... And I, I, knew I didn't have like the same systems in place. Like you had like email lists and uh-huh. regular content that you would release. You had systems in place that you would do all this stuff. And I was like, mm, I have people that will turn up for my shows, but I don't have any systems in place. Okay. We had different skills. That's for sure. Like I was more timid when it came to performing. But you sure. had everything system wise in place. I guess so. And I had like amazing shows and could like collaborate with anyone and did and was like busy gigging but i had like no none of the admin systems in place so i was a little intimidated to like show you my stuff because i knew you were like excellent and i had like nothing (laughs) in place so it took a while to like i don't know cultivate creativity and vulnerability in our music and Mm. our stuff yeah like since we're both musicians too like i can go into musician mind when you're showing me something and i can go like oh that little part needs you know this thing or like we can get into that headspace and instead of just being like wow that's perfect you're so amazing and so like Mm -hmm. i've learned over time too to just like i don't know like we're both amazing and we're both 
like musically in tune and so sometimes it's just like I don't know showing up for each other and letting each other do our thing because we do do stuff differently Mm -hmm. like when I do my music you do yours we have different systems and different ways of doing things like you're very people oriented and like let me get your phone number and I'll text you when our next show is and so like yeah whatever and I'm very like let me go on my computer and together when we start making music together it's like we bring all those skills together I like it. I like what we do. I have to like think in my head, what am I showing up as for you? Mm. Like, I have to think, okay, am I a wife? Am I business partner? Am I, even in our music business, we have different roles where like I drop the contracts. Surprise, surprise. Take that. People who think ADHD people can't do stuff. (laughs) Wow. <laughs> I drop I drop the contracts and you you make like the flyers and things mm-hmm. you draw on your computer. And <laughs> <laughs> no, but what I'm trying to say is I intentionally ask myself when you, especially when you're like showing me a new single or whatever, like I ask myself, what am I supposed to show up as right now? I think sometimes I tell you too, like, yeah. hey, by the way this is the finished song and i just want you to love it yeah i don't want i don't want your opinion on it anymore i just, just want, want you to the love praise it. yeah and you yep. give me that and i love that so. well you i definitely know that i showed you my ep that matt and i've been working on for years years of hard work mm-hmm. and you said oh it's great except for this and it literally changed the course of all of those songs. And we went back in oh, gosh, and changed so the structure of so many of those songs based off of your comment. And I'm kind of like, I wish I had taken Music Megan into the studio a year ago. Uh, <laughs> so. it's, yeah, it's just, I think it's complicated together. And we've found a lot more patience and grace for each other and communication. What? What do you need in your space, in your mindset, in your day? Like, you're like, okay, I want to be creative today. Like, Mm. what do you need? Or does it kind of just come randomly? Like, I want to pick up the guitar and play some music. Like, I feel like I need to engage my senses. Or like writing too, like writing, music, stuff like that. Yeah, I think how things smell and feel in a room really changes what I'll be able to do creatively mm-hmm. so if the floor is like vacuumed and there's a nice smelling candle or essential oil going then my mm-hmm. creativity like i feel calm and then i feel like i can just create you need multiple signs of just like peace and balance yeah and i've created in chaos before like i had a rock band in the valley and we did not live in peace at all we all lived together and it was a rock band <laughs> and we all were crazy <laughs> and it was in chaos but we created some of the coolest songs I have there, you mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Just now in this phase of life, I feel like peace in our home, like candles and it being warm and, you know, the dogs being happy and safe. Yeah. Oh, that's so sweet. And also like nothing looming on my to-do list. Yes, that's true. I think I kind of need that which i just kind of remembered a couple little things that i need to do for other people um yeah i think it's just doing all the the little things that would make me stressed out just like i just need to be in like a i don't know kind of let go of that like ambitious mindset that's like oh well well, the house isn't clean in this way or like my i need to do this thing for this person or check my email like i need to like let go of all of that And just be in a creative mindset. I I like it. There's also this thing I learned in a creative writing class in high school. Hmm. Where she taught us to at least once a week just get out a piece of paper Mm. and write anything. Ignore all of the grammatical rules. Ignore structuring. Just write and know that nobody's going to read it or see it. Like there's Hmm. no rules. And I think that that's also what I need now, especially if I'm songwriting. Like, Mm -hmm. I just, I need nobody's opinion. Unless I'm, like, co-writing with people. Sure. Like, if I'm collaborating on a song, obviously I'm going to take people's opinions. But I honestly don't really do that with people. 
that often. It's a bit more personal. Yeah. So I just go in and I have to think nobody's listening. Nobody cares. I'm here to just make whatever I want. I love that. I should do that for for songwriting. Like once a week for 20 minutes, just play around with music. I don't know. Because I think I get in the mindset of if it's not for something that's going to be produced into the world, then it's not even worth doing. But like they say that like you need rejuvenating time of creativity and like just plain old fun Mm -hmm. that doesn't contribute to being productive or it doesn't result in something like you need stuff that's fun and that's creative and whether or not you release it. Yeah. So I need to figure out how to have both of those things. Maybe that's my resolution. Making I'm going to sign that one for you. That's good. How many do I have now? <laughs> Four. <laughs> I don't know. If <laughs> I don't I'm know, sorry, babe. babe. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no. You're fine. You're, you're just being funny. You're just being funny. <laughs> well, I feel like whether or not you release that create that creativity, it's a good exercise. Yeah. You know, but I mean, Edgar Allan Poe released his chaos and the world loved it. So honestly, it's going to be a challenge because sometimes I just am so tired or drained that I'm like the weekend rolls around and I'm like, I just want to sit and watch my tv show and turn off my brain and just have a good time but it would probably be better for my for something if i sat down and was challenged to just play music for like 20 minutes or whatever because that is hard like there's i don't know there's a certain amount of like writer's block or like i don't know what i'm my doing if i'm songwriting you know unless you have that like inspiration randomly like yeah it's hard to get into it sometimes so i definitely yeah. see that for me what i've been helping what's been helping me with writer's block cuz i i don't know if it's adhd but i just i get it fiercely sometimes and it's like i don't want to write anything not any form yeah. of writing then it also extends to reading so what i've been doing is journaling more and reading more mm. physical books. You've been journaling it like every night or. Yeah. So I'm one of those people night. that I made fu- make fun of. Like I'm going to journal every day. I love it. Year. I love this side of you. Like we went to Target one time and you just picked up a journal and you were like, I'm going to journal again. And because you've journaled at other times in your life. And I'm like, OK. And you just I just love it. I Aww. love it. I like to end my day with journaling, which has been helping one recall what's been happening which i need as an artist um but two it just it helps me remember the feeling of like writing and processing so that way when i go to songwrite or sing or whatever like i can access that because it's not so distant you know i can access that get the feelings again yeah oh i love it you're you're like one of the most wholesome people that i know you are the most wholesome person i know it's not a competition (laughs) No. <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm curious what you guys do to foster creativity. Yeah, like Sherelle and I live in such a small little circle of musicians and I feel like we can kind of get stuck in that. Like I just want to know what people do creatively that aren't musicians. Like I just want to know what you guys do. We'll hear from the musicians too, but we are curious what you guys are. I know. I, too. I think one of my friends does like that crochet type thing and That's awesome. Yeah, like what do you what do you do for your creativity slash what would you want to do in the new year for that? I Hopefully. like it. Yeah. Shout out to our listener buddy Harry. Oh he responded to an email. Um, yes. Go for it. So I have a single coming out February 9th, which I'm super excited about. And I sent out an email to my little email list about it. And our friend Harry, who's a musician, he responded and he was like, I'm so excited for this. Also, I listened to you guys' podcast. So yeah, he's been like listening from the beginning. So that's cool. Yeah. Shout out. Um, Also, I remember that a couple episodes or a few episodes ago, we wanted to start a new segment and I don't think we followed through with it. Yeah. What was the segment called? It was what's giving you peace or what's making you petty. Oh, okay. Do you have anything petty? No. <laughs> um, um, I think I just want to do what's giving me peace this week. I'm down for that because uh, we just got home, so I don't really have that much to be petty about. 
Yeah. So for our neighbors, we're parked in our our driveway when I got home. So that made me petty. Oh. <laughs> I was like, oh, so we go out of town and you think that you can use our driveway. Nice. Yeah, that is something you get petty about. <laughs> Uh, what's giving you peace, baby? Something that's bringing me peace is changing plans. Because I, th- I think you and I have tried to be like, okay, we got to do the podcast at this time. And then we got to, and I'm like, we're going to not follow any mm-hmm. timeline. <laughs> I like that side of you. Because usually you're like, you devise a plan, then you stick to it come hell or high water and you exhaust yourself in the yeah. process and i think we were supposed to film the podcast last night and i was like i just want to sit and watch tv so i think i'm listening to my body and my mind and just slightly changing plans and being more flexible and i appreciate you rolling with that i like it i'm here for it what's bringing you peace mm, i feel like i said it before but it's still my novels that i'm reading and listening to i'm Mm. like listening to two books right now and also reading two or three books at the same time cheryl's got a lot of books going on so there's a lot yeah there's a lot of stories in my head and they're all bringing me a lot of joy and and peace i freaking love that what's one book that you're stoked about that our, our listeners might be interested in trying well, I showed you one called Those Who Wait by Haley Cass. Is that the one we're listening to? That's one we're listening to right now. <gasps> it's so and it's good. It's sapphic and it's awesome. It's a queer love story. I just, I I love it. It's so quirky and it's so hilarious. And that's all. You guys should go check it out. So I'm listening to the sapphic books and uh, How to Build a Non-Anxious Life or Building a Non-Anxious Life by Dr. John yes, Deloney. That's I've been really reading good. that. I've been reading that book. You've been too. stealing my book. That's what's up. <laughs> Sherelle, Sherelle goes and buys all the good books and I get to read them. Yes, too. and I'm like in the process of reading them and I'm like, where the heck is my book? And it's like in her purse, like zipped up in a <laughs> no. secret compartment. No. Oh, I took it to work all day. And I'm like, cool. I guess I'll play Tetris and sit here in the dark by myself, <laughs> not reading my book. Oh. oh my gosh. Well, thank you guys for listening. By the way, remember to follow or subscribe or whatever on whichever <laughs> platform. Do you whatever you to. want on whatever Do platform. Do whatever you want. Um, but truly, it brings us to more people like yourself. Um, don't be stingy with us. Give us a little five-star rating. Only five. You guys know the deal. Don't do anything less than five. <laughs> you know the deal like what are they getting you guys already know i don't want any less than five stars we strive for perfection if there's anything we need to work on you can send us an email at at our place podcast yep at at gmail.com yeah and then we will politely respond to any requests (laughs) yeah polite respond I love when you mumble. You're just like, oh, it's my grumpy pop energy. <laughs> that was, you guys have been awesome. We like talking to you. Yes. All right. Well, we love you guys. Thank you for hanging out with us again. And we'll see you next week. See you next time. Bye. Bye.